I did a video recently titled, Why Blame LDL? Now, <clears throat> it was very well received. It went back and basically just covered some basics on uh, something that you'll hear many times in many other videos uh, on this channel. The, the vast majority of the medical community is totally focused on LDL or bad cholesterol, and they tend to forget about things like cardiovascular inflammation, which for most of us is far more important. But <clears throat> I say most of us, there are about 60 to 80 people that will view this uh, channel today um, for whom LDL is more important. Uh, again, uh, 13 to 15,000 views, but there's, there's a subpopulation that have FH, familial hypercholesterolemia. For those, LDL is very, very important. Um, <clears throat> and there's some discussion about LDL. Actually, it started a few weeks before uh, I started doing my series on FH. For example, um, Tam Chen mentioned some problems that he was having, and he mentioned familial hypercholesterolemia isn't helping. But so far, research doesn't seem to indicate FH by itself is problematic. Not sure where you got that. I think it can be very problematic. John responded, FH is brutal. It trumps most risk factors. It runs in my family. Um, <clears throat> then as you go down further, uh, there was an interesting comment from a viewer named Susan Bolton. She said, I share my, many videos on statins and inflammation with my family. Most don't want to hear it. I have familial hypercholesterolemia. At age 34, my cholesterol was discovered to be 600. I had coronary artery disease, so they did bypass surgery. And that's something that you'll hear quite a bit. Extremely high LDL levels and cardiac events in their 30s. For people with, uh, with uh, homozygous, so this is just a heterozygous. Heterozygous means you got it from one, one parent but not the other. Homozygous means you got a dose from both parents. Those uh, people that have homozygous can have a heart attack or other coronary events in their 20s or even teens. I did a video on um, heterozygous and homozygous FH uh, just recently. Now, <clears throat> let's go back to the uh, FH Foundation site, and I wanted to cover a couple of things. There was another uh, viewer that asked me, should I get checked for uh, FH, and if so, how? Um, <clears throat> So, uh, he went on to say, by the way, I think he said his LDL was like 200 and something. So, uh, you can imagine my answer. Yes, you obviously clearly need to be checked out. Um, you go to the FH site, and you can, you can find it just by uh, Googling the FHfoundation.org. Let me show you that on this video real quick. The FHfoundation.org. Um, <clears throat> this will bring you up to the home page. Uh, and right here, they've got, a, they've got some nice videos, some real quick ones. And I'm going to show you a video on a conference that they had in 2017 um, in just a minute. But before I do, do you have FH? It's a very nice uh, view of what's, uh, what to look for. And I'll cover that. Do I have FH? Yes. Well, then you need to get... Um, you need to get your family tested, you need to find a lipid specialist, and lifestyle changes. And uh, they go into some detail on each of those on how you can get those done. Now, <clears throat> I don't know. What do I do to find out if I have FH? First of all, what is FH? Familial hypercholesterolemia. F plus H equals, well, uh, let's go on down here. Family history, early heart disease, again, 20s and 30s, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, if you have that, yes, you need, to, you need to investigate further. No, I don't have that. I don't have a family history with early heart disease. Uh, how about untreated cholesterol? Untreated cholesterol over 190? Yes, again, you need to find out more about what's going on with you because you may have it. 
Uh, no. How about an immediate family with uh, familial hypercholesterolemia? Yes, again, you need to find out. One in 250 people have FH. Uh, some would say one in 200 have FH. So again, a lot, of, uh, a lot of focus needs to be generated around this disease or a cluster of diseases because we're just not getting it. Um, the uh, American uh, College of Cardiology, for example, says 11-year-old kids should be tested for cholesterol. Pediatricians are not doing it, and they're not doing it because they don't want to draw blood, they don't want to put the patient through that, and they're thinking, well, you know, kids don't have cholesterol problems. Well, that's the time to find it out, especially at, uh, someone with uh, homozygous FH really needs to be uh, treated earlier. Someone with FH in their 50s that has a high cholesterol is not exactly like someone who uh, someone who has a high cholesterol but doesn't have FH because the FH patient has had it since birth, very high levels. Now let's go back. Let's take a look at um, this community. I mentioned that I would cover the, uh, the Global Summit 2017. Uh, before I do, I'll just give you a couple of um, things to look for. For, for example, in one, in one clip they're saying, we found a phenotypic, we're finding a lot of people with phenotypic uh, FH, but we're not finding anything. It's a genetics researcher, and what he means by phenotypic is uh, the body, they're finding tests that indicate very high cholesterol. But when they go in and they look at the genetic uh, test, they're not finding all the usual, or any of the usual FH genetics. Again, when you think about what I said earlier, that becomes clear why. If there are close to 2,000 genetic variations already that have been discovered, then there are several others, uh, probably, that we haven't seen yet. And I've, I've actually had a patient just like that. We did all of the usual suspects. Uh, they, they still didn't show up for her, but uh, she clearly had FH. Um, there's another series of clips that talks about uh, women and FH. You know, that's like a, a very deadly, frustrating triumvirate right now. Women are not uh, often recognized when they have chest pain and potential heart attack. Uh, FH is usually not considered early on in the diagnosis. And you put them together, women with FH, as I mentioned before, typically will go to um, go in with chest pain and, and be told, well, they have anxiety or stress. So again, there's a lot of work we need to do in terms of showing what's going on and making doctors aware and making patients aware. I want to welcome you all to the 2017 FH Global Summit. It's amazing to look around at this room of incredible brain power and dedication. FH affects every race and every ethnicity. And there are subpopulations within FH who need to be studied more rigorously and require even more specific specialized care and there must be targeted research, as we have just heard, relative to FH, on the women with the highest risks and the burdens of disease. What we must do as a group, investigate, educate, advocate, and legislate. We probably still think it's a man's disease, but as she outlined today, it's the number one killer of women and the number one killer of men. This is a powerful summit, and it's a great example of what we should all ascribe to in medicine. These summits are highly solved. My colleagues and friends in Amsterdam still see patients that have an absolute FH phenotype, and they can't find anything. There must be more to discover. So there you go. We've got a major risk factor. It's, uh, it kills people. As John said, it's brutal. 
Um, and the, the bad part is that so few people are aware of it. As I mentioned in the beginning of this channel, uh, this video, between 40 and 80 people uh, today and every day will view this channel that have FH. What I didn't mention was only between 1 and 10% of them will actually know they have FH. The vast majority of people, 90 to 99% that have FH, don't know it. So, again, it's very important for uh, all of us to be aware of this, to be thinking about it. If you already know that you don't have FH, that's good. Congratulations. Um, but what about your friends? Uh, don't allow them to just rely on their doc to remember this, because we've already seen that doesn't happen. Help your doc, help your friends, remind them, make them aware. Thank you very much.